all right so sir what is your in this plan? case i had planned in this case i had planned for a staged uh, uh, procedure sir in the first stage because this child had a significant uh, uh, retrognathia micrognathia and features in the history suggestive of sleep apnea uh, and also the mouth opening in this child was limited but still 2.8 cm and child is able to tolerate with feeds everything he was taking sir so okay. in this child in the first stage we had planned for a mandibular distraction on both the sides and a simultaneous palatal transverse expansion to address this narrowed maxillary arch sir and uh, simultaneously we'll give a physiotherapy for uh, tm joints sir and mouth opening exercises we'll give rigorously and after the completion of stage 1 we will reassess this child sir for mouth opening if it is improving or getting restricted if mouth opening is good in this child and it is improving we will not further proceed and we'll keep the child under observation sir if there is further significant mouth opening reduction then we will address the tm joint also sir by releasing it with or without coronoidectomy and interposition gap arthroplasty we had planned sir and simultaneously the child also will be planned for a dental rehabilitation because of his crowded teeth malaligned and supernumerary teeth were there for the dental rehabilitation we will be planning and once the skeletal maturity is achieved by 16 to 18 years then we will plan for a genioplasty if the patients and the parents are worried about the cosmetic deformity so uh, if i have understood your plan of management correctly you you want to lengthen the mandible uh, your priority is lengthening the mandible first and the Mouth opening, you feel, is not very important. If it is uh, not moving, then only you will think of doing the uh, TM joint replacement. Is it correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tell me, tell me, how would you be able to carry up? See, mouth opening is just two point eight centimeters. How will this mouth opening improve with this section? Sir, uh, mouth opening, but see, because of distraction, will not improve, sir. But with physiotherapy, because the yeah. joint spaces yes. are well made out here, sir. Probably we are expecting a fibrous ankylosis in this patient, sir. So with aggressive physiotherapy, we see, might be able. See, you have, you have, see, you have have seen in CT scan the coronal process is so much enlarged. Whatever okay. amount of physiotherapy might do, this enlarged coronal process will not allow you. adequate mouth opening okay sir so unless you address this coronoid lengthened coronoid process be, although there might joint space seen on ct scan you are seeing the joint space but the mouth opening one of the reasons not opening enough is this enlarged coronoid process so unless you decrease this uh, coronoid process you do coronoid rectomy mouth opening will not increase so okay. i can i can agree that you don't want the tm joint right now but okay sir again is going in for you know all the kill go go release the tm joint or the tm joint whether it is ankylosis or it is a bony ankylosis release that do coronoidectomy do physiotherapy and subsequently uh, uh, do the mandibular dissection and when mouth opening is good only then you can address rest of the intraoral uh, uh, processes also like uh, extension plates and dental rehabilitation other things can also be done well so why not have adequate mouth opening in the beginning and then later on go and do the mandibular dissection prior to dissection you will also have to like take care of the intraoral dental rehabilitation also so why yes, not reverse that you sir. yeah both things can be done i just want to you know have your for doing dissection first yes sir as you pointed out this can be combined sir but uh, if combined sir both the procedures both the tm joint release and mandibular dissection when they are done together sir especially after release when we are doing Take a distraction yes when we are doing a distraction after yeah. immediately in the same sitting with the temporomandibular joint release sir. when we are distracting for the mandibular height sir mm -hmm. so at that moment there will be actually we are going against yeah. the principle of preserving a gap we will be actually occluding this uh, release the temporomandibular joint against each other sir so there is a possibility yes. of ankylosis which is increased sir 
but with the interposition maybe the incidence is greater so that is one of the disadvantages of combining both the things together sir. and so don't combine uh, you know you should not combine it that point is agreed okay. but why not reverse first first release mandible uh, ankylosis whether it is fibrous ankylosis or bony ankylosis have good mouth adequate mouth opening do his dental uh, work up rehabilitation and then go ahead and do your medial dissection so maybe 6 months down the line the child is just 11 month 11 years old you can always buy time 6 months later when mouth opening is good you have, you have given adequate physiotherapy there is no danger that he will go into re ankylosis again that time you go and put distractors yes sir it you can be contact but uh, but in this child maybe the uh, factor of obstructive sleep apnea that is also present sir so if it is like significant then we will have to address the mandibular distraction and first sir, to prevent the sleep apnea which is more yeah, like see uh, as per the sleep apnea reports except one incidence of this, that uh, atpo uh, spo2 that everything else is not very you know alarming thing yes sir, and once sleep you apnea. release this uh, tm joint yeah yeah okay you are saying something yes sir if sleep apnea is not a problem then we can reverse this sir. फर्स्ट इज that the child will have adequate mouth opening he will be able to feed himself well the child gets encouraged that with this operation his mouth opening has improved yes sir in distraction you must understand in a position that he is able to open his mouth well continue this rigorous physiotherapy for 6 months or so maybe one year and one year 6 uh, uh, to 9 months later you can come put your distractors then this child is going to be more cooperative for this long rehabilitation because distraction itself will take about 3 months yes sir all right okay. but as you said uh, both the things can be done you can skin the cat in many ways uh, the question is which one is more logical Yes, sir. All right. Okay. Okay. So, um, so has this child been operated? I I don't have any further uh, okay. details whether okay. this child is okay. operated. Okay. Okay. Fine. Fine. Since you are mentioning about the distraction, tell me which kind of distraction this will be. This will be uniplanar distraction, or will it be a multiplanar distraction? Sir, in this child, we had planned for a biplanar distraction, sir, both for the ramal height lengthening, mm -hmm. also for the body anterior distraction. Also, we had planned, sir. So, dual osteotomy yes. with biplanar distractor. Correct, correct, correct. All right. See, one of the advantages of doing distraction first, as you proposed, was that since you are not doing anything to the TM joint uh, area. you can distract it without uh, unnecessarily being worried that you know because you are doing two things which are opposite in principles in uh, tm joint release you want to have physiotherapy in distraction you don't want to have any physiotherapy right so if you have not yeah. released the tm joint ankylosis and you start distraction it serves the purpose that you distract it fully and then you go and release the tm joint but here i have found that the patients feel very frustrated that their mouth has still not opened and i have already spent 4 months 5 months on this section okay sir. okay okay but uh, both the plans are viable you can do any either way okay sir all right okay i think we you already had about 40 minutes of discussion anything else uh, you said that you also want to do uh, genioplasty subsequently in this child Uh, yes sir after all the distraction and all the procedures are completed then if they are cosmetically worried then we will uh -huh. plan for a genioplasty sir so because this child is about 11 month 11 years old only and if you complete this distraction in another one oh, year or so there will be enough time enough time spent 
uh, left for this skin to grow maybe you will not require the genoplasty at a later date yes sir we will wait for the skeletal maturity and the catch up growth to happen sir in this stage yeah. after a skeletal maturity only we will so, be so, contemplating so any procedures yes okay. and the distractors which you have planned they they are all intraoral devices uh, yes sir in this we have planned for an intraoral device sir if child is not affordable or because of logistic reasons we can go in for extraoral distractor also sir but uh, the scars we we'll have to explain to the patients and the attenders about the scars that might happen and also the osteomyelitis and the infection rates which are higher in the extra oral sir otherwise both the procedures will be uh, equally uh, functionally it will be equal sir both extra oral and intra oral uh, distractors uh, that is correct uh, with the extra oral things the, the control of the vector is little easier but as you very rightly said the scarring is a bit minus point okay sir. then uh, what kind of approach will be there for tm joint release sir uh, tm joint will be a pre auricular approach will uh, we had planned for a alkyd bramless a pre auricular approach sir mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. show the incision now so how do you ensure that yeah okay yes sir so how do you ensure that you don't end up damaging branches of the facial nerve sir uh, uh, um, while raising the flaps sir we will be having some pointers sir like from the uh, tragus anteriorly between 0.8 cm to 2.8 cm usually the uh, the branching starts sir and also uh, when the zygomatic arch is being approached sir we normally take the periosteum along with the skin flaps sir so we don't dissect between the periosteum and the skin flap sir so by doing both this correct correct we preserve the uh, facial nerve sir mm -hmm. so and the landmarks also okay. help us so let us say you yes sir right right so let us say that you took all the precautions uh, that the facial nerve branches may not be damaged but hello sir on that side sir uh, i couldn't get your question properly sir your voice got broken between sir. but let us let us assume that intraoperatively you took all the precautions you went subperiosteally you did not and you are very sure that you did not damage the branch of the facial nerve but post operatively you notice that there is slight weakness eye closure on that side is not good what could be the reason Sir, uh, usually it will be neuropraxia, sir, due to the traction of the flaps, especially while retraction, sir. So that is the commonest reason. If you are very sure so, that so it is always a... intraoperatively, yeah. if you are very sure we haven't injured, it is. So you must difficult. always. Yes, sir. So you must warn the patient that uh, invariably there will be slight, you know, uh, difficulty in closure of the eye. in first seven days or so but as the edema settles down this everything said becomes okay okay all right and what is the interposition material you are going to use uh, in this case actually the joint space is well preserved sir so if intraarticular disc we are able to salvage intraoperatively the same we will use to reposition and use as an intraarticular uh, interposition uh, things sir but uh, if it that is not be, that could be one possibility but since we don't have sequential yes sir so but since we don't have sequential ct scan cuts in the uh, so you you cannot be sure there could be some bony component then you will have to do that then you will have to put some uh, interposition but if it is only fibrous ankylosis and uh, the disc is reasonably okay maybe uh, the option you described could be okay Yes, sir. Otherwise, we'll use a temporal sphere with the muscle, sir, as an mm -hmm. interposition in this case, sir. Okay. After uh, the arthroplasty is done. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, Doctor Lakshmi, uh, you must be keeping track of uh, the questions which our other participants must be wanting to ask. So, are there some uh, good questions? Good evening. <laughs> good evening. Uh, I only have some questions. Good evening. 
good evening sir Hi, yeah. sir one more question from hello, here hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, please, please. Uh, sorry, because some some uh, connectivity issues, so I could join only a little late. See, do you okay, accept okay, uh, intraoral distractors in a child, sir? No, intraoral distraction in a is, child. I feel it is yeah very difficult, <laughs> yeah. very difficult, yeah. and uh, and the control of the vectors will be even more difficult. Vectors will be yeah. So you know it, uh, yeah very 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 difficult, and uh, like in my unit we. Uh, at the cost of giving little extra scar we prefer the external distractor yeah extra work. and always you can do some touch up work anything also you can do and you can mark on it also right. no, sir? yeah as yeah. the further distractions yeah, yeah. Yeah. the scars for plastic surgeons uh, scars <laughs> for plastic surgeons a big issue you can always come yeah. up on them yeah yeah dr lakshmi you were also saying something okay sir sir, uh, sir uh, i have one more doubt is a child uh, what is uh, uh -huh. what is your opinion of uh, putting costochondral grafts sir well you know we were very uh, uh, enthusiastic about using costochondral graft you know about uh, uh, 15 years ago or so but yes. then we have realized that uh, uh, the growth is very unpredictable uh, okay. so uh, in our unit we don't do costo control grafts any longer uh, and you know uh, with the availability of this distraction uh, okay. as a uh, alternative option uh, okay. that we don't uh, do because uh, okay. the, the growth is really unpredictable here so, uh, so it is better to do some kind of distraction distraction is good good option okay sir okay because you have more predictability there yes sir. yes there are uh, over growth and all will be there yes yes lot of problems are there yes sir so uh, a couple of questions have been asked by the participants sir can we just take those questions sir six yeah, questions please. yeah sure sure sure, sure. one doctor shanu agarwal yeah. dr shanu agarwal has put in a question when ct scan is being uh -huh. done do we need to do opg what are the additional findings yeah. seen on opg right now I, that is why i was asking him why get the opg done there is no need if you get the ct scan done it can give you it can give you all the information which you get from the orthopedic okay. uh, and especially with the cone ct cone beam ct scan the radiation dose gives us uh, orthopentogram gives you more dose more radiation so uh, unless there is a specific indication that you want to do the orthopentogram we should avoid it okay and first uh, so ear ankylosis i don't i don't think we yeah dr fias has yeah dr fias has asked another question if an adult or a child presents mm -hmm. with a trivial injury to the chin due to anxious due to the anxiousness with no gross clinical findings on examination at that time anything will be done uh, anything should be done or advice uh -huh. to prevent progression to uh, tmj ankylosis yeah at that time anything to be done to, uh, or advice to prevent the progression to tmj ankylosis the i i couldn't hear it uh, can you please repeat it there was, there was a little sound break in my yes sir Yeah, yeah. If an adult or child uh -huh. presents with a trivial injury to uh -huh. the chin due to anxiousness, with no yeah. gross clinical findings uh -huh. on examination, uh, at that time should uh -huh. anything be done or advised to prevent progression to TMJ ankylosis? Yes, yes. I say very valid uh, query. Uh, suppose somebody has has got a trivial uh, injury, somebody, and then you find that there could be you know some game arthrosis there, which can be manifested. by uh, some limit uh, uh, amount of trismus you know the the patient has you know slight difficulty which has improved subsequently this is a telltale sign that you should be careful that this child should be kept on a child or the person should be kept on a long term follow up and ensure that the physiotherapy is issued. the treatment of uh, even established tmj ankylosis even when we have an intervention arthroplasty after the release the corner stone of the success of that operation is therapy post op physiotherapy so if there is doubtful case that you are suspect could be a trivial trauma if you institute vigorous physiotherapy and keep the person on long term follow up we can definitely prevent development of a well established tmj ankylosis 
rheumatism. So I think the physiotherapy is the key. Okay, sir. In this so another question, sir. And yes. Another question by uh, Dr. Joseph Katari. Uh, he was asking, sir, why is the coronoid lengthened, sir? Sound stream could got interrupted in between. Couldn't catch the answer. Huh. So, so what is the like, reason? Uh, you know, it, it, I was why? asking. I was asking him. The the coronoid process has attachment to the and temporalis muscle. Our is that temporalis muscle is not helping in opening of the mouth. Right, it closes the mouth. So why should there overaction of the temporalis muscle so that it results in lengthening of the coronoid process? So the answer to that was that when there was a restriction of the mouth opening, if you go back to the various uh, you know uh, parts of the cavities of the PM joint, the upper cavity is for translational movement, and for translational movement, you oh. are vulnerable to be protrusion protruded. Slide. And temporalis plays an important role in that. So, whenever a child has got difficulty, he is also hyperactive. Sir, uh, again, again, there was a. Uh -huh. Sir, again, your yes. voice has got <laughs> broken. <Yes. laughs> yeah, just now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will repeat it once again. That I said that the coronoid process lengthening is manifested because of the hyperactivity of temporalis muscle. The hyperactivity of the temporalis muscle happens in cases of temp temporomandibular joint ankylosis because of the fact that for additional movement in the TM joint, you have translational movement in the uh, part of the cavity, TM joint cavity and for that movement temporalis muscle is an important muscle so that means temporalis muscle will also be hyperactive in cases of tm joint ankylosis so it will keep on pulling on the coronoid process so it gets lengthened so that is one of the philosophies why the coronoid process gets lengthened in tm joint ankylosis am i clear yes, and uh, all yes absolutely sir Said another question was regarding okay. the antigonial notch. Why is the antigonial notch again being prominent? Yeah, same, same. Because the same. depressors, uh, or, or same, the depressors are continuously acting to open the mouth, and so uh, they are hyperactive. Antigonial notch develops. So they are all in response to the functional, uh, you know, uh, consequences. Thanks. So the next question is again by Dr. Shanu Agarwal. Uh, the question is, what should be mm -hmm. done to avoid vascular injury during release of TMJ? Well, uh, uh, well uh, you know, there could be two, three uh, levels at which, uh, which you could damage the uh, vascular uh, medicals. One is that when you're placing your skin in season, you could damage the branches of the cerebral temporal artery at that time also. But more sinister, and this is that when you are removing the, the bony block, as you reach its medial extent or the depth, you know, then you the medial extent of that, that uh, bony block could be in close, close relation to the pterygoid uh, veins. So if, if you are not very careful, that pterygoid plexus of uh, veins can get you know breached and it can lead to you know troublesome bleeding. You cause also, bleeding because of the Damage branches of the in the depth. So they are the reasons where you should be, you know, more careful. And you should always be doing surgery under vision. You know, you do anything blindly. So, next question by Dr. Selwyn is, uh, what is the post-op management of splinting? For, uh, of how long should we do the splinting? Uh, splinting means uh, he needs to have. Uh, we don't want to splint. We want to as early as possible. Yeah, uh -huh. yes, splinting sir. will be counterproductive. <laughs> we should not be splinting. In fact, uh, you should start the physiotherapy as soon as possible, and that could be yes, next morning. Open the mouth, eat something, give the painkillers, and then encourage physiotherapy. Excuse me, sir. So my 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 meaning of yes. printing is 
for keep to keep the mouth opening sir to keep the mouth open so like screw gag or how for how long it has to be maintained sir? that's what my question is oh, oh, oh so that was you know you you should not keep it you know for a very long time uh, so like you have that uh, mouth opener keep it there for few minutes then take it off then let the child uh, do physiotherapy in the closing of the mouth start eating food and then every time you do this very mouth opener you should keep it there for few minutes only it should not be left for hours thank you sir thank you right so next question you want to encourage if you want or yeah yeah for that yeah the next business uh, by rakesh kumar any role of entrop approach in tnj uh -huh. ankylosis any 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 role for entrop approach of tnj ankylosis i think is there any any way we can actually avoid the external incision and then go just by in, internal uh, incisions i think that's what uh, uh, i at least i am not aware of it Okay. I am not aware of it. But how can you? Uh, when this person is not able to open the mouth, then how to? How can I do oral approach? Yeah, that's well, true. you have to be a magician to do that. Yeah. So, Doctor Suresh has again come up with a question, sir. Can we use single osteotomy at the level of the angle for increasing both the vector, mm -hmm. or we need to do two osteotomies? Well, it is very very difficult. Although people have uh, uh, described that single osteotomy uh, with uh, some special maneuvers, you can uh, resort to only one single osteotomy and then uh, do lengthening of both body as well as the ramus. But very difficult to control it with multi vectors, uh, uh, multi vector uh, uh, distractors available now. It has made the life very easy. So I think we should always go in for double osteotomy uh, rather than. One osteotomy trying to achieve both things difficult, very difficult. Yes. Doctor Anup has asked a question: How to correct anterior open bite after release of bilateral TMJ? Well, well uh, anterior open bite. Uh, the, the reason for this anterior open bite could be that if you have removed, you know, a major chunk of the bone, and the there is, uh, you know, push, the height decreases so much that there is, uh, you know, premature of the. Uh, rollers. So, so one of the reasons for the interposition uh, is that it gives you some additional height, so that can be avoided. And uh, postoperatively, suppose the child has, uh, the person has got uh, anterior open bite. Uh, gradually, uh, with physiotherapy, it improves. And if required, we can actually uh, take help of our dental police. They can give us a uh, bite block to correct that. This can be corrected. Yes, you will need some bite blocks. You need some bite blocks. Yeah. Yes. Sir. Yes, I so, think that's all the think, questions that has come up in the chat box. Uh, I think if it's okay. Sir, then... one more. One more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one more uh, yeah, question, sure, sir. Sure, sure. This child is having uh -huh. a micrognathia, rhipognathia from the birth uh -huh. time. It was noticed by the parents, no, no, okay. and uh, there is a uh, uh -huh. sleep apnea. Also. Sir, uh, uh -huh. uh, like uh, what about the Perry Robbins uh, sequelae in this uh, patient? Child has got like, difficulty in uh, mouth, uh, uh, mouth opening. started only three months. Notice it three months back, sir. The child is 11 uh -huh. year old. Uh, uh -huh. uh, these two are the two components uh, the PG has to suggest like that or this micrognathia and retrognathia is not uh, purely because of uh, the TMJ ankylosis. What do you think, sir? Is it uh, how to attribute and uh, 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 diagnose? In this particular case, uh, they noticed uh, the gross micrognathia and retrognathia at birth. And mouth open, restricted mouth opening for the three months they noticed, maybe two years back. So, can we tell that there are two components or uh, how to justify? You know, you know, it could be, you know, uh, one of the differential diagnoses of hemifacial yeah. microsomia is TMJ ankylosis also. So it could be that it could be, you know, some variant of the hemifacial microsomia, uh, uh, which 
it could be Prozeski type 1 you know, because the condyle is slightly misshaped, PM joint uh, is already there. So, could be there, but looking at the CT scan of this, chi uh, this child, it appears that there is some element of, of uh, PM joint necrosis only. Any other feature? Uh, Perry Robin, sir. Perry Robin? Sequel, can't can't rule because it's uh, out. in uh, hemi hemifac hemifacial microsomia. Usually, one joint uh, will be having this uh, condylar deformity problems and all, and rarely ten percent bilateral. Uh, but microsomia yes. is present from the childbirth, and it is uh, enhanced. So, uh, can we say it was having Perry Robbins and added uh, with the TM jankalosis? Due to trivial trauma and all to the chin? Well, you can always argue it that way, but the very fact that this has, you know, hugely enlarged coronary process, that basically yes. means that, so, you know, all this is happening uh, postnatally only. Um, a long time. Long it is not something. And when you are able to open the mouth, we can have a look at his pellet. So if the pellet yes. is, you know, high arched, but in the pellet. shape of then uh, probably we can come to a conclusion whether the tongue is also uh, of you know uh, relatively large size. So if we can uh, comment on those situations, then probably you could uh, think of Perry Roberts. But looking at the holistic picture of this patient, that he has uh, decreased mouth opening for last limited duration, coronary processes are increased in size. Uh, I think it could be chances of it being TM and ankylosis or more rather than being uh, peripheral. So this uh, restricted uh, growth and all uh, is uh, uh, related to more related to TNJ ankylosis uh, due to destruction of the condyle yes. and all than the congenital, isn't it, sir? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, because and I feel uh, uh, one more doubt. this. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, one sure. more doubt, sir. Uh, there is a. Uh, uh, joint space is preserved and uh, we are thinking fibrous type. Uh, will it be sufficient to do bilateral coronary Will it improve the mouth opening and uh, is it necessary to go the, and address the joints uh, uh, in total, sir? Uh, that's, a, uh, that's a good option that we could uh, just go through an intro. Uh, but before doing that, sir, hello, your voice is uh, again interrupted, sir. Hello, 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 sir. Let me put off my. Uh, yeah, can you can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, very well, uh, very well, sir. Very now, yes, sir. Yeah. yes, sir. Okay, so. So what I was saying, you know, uh, uh, the, the point you raised that we don't do the TMJ and ankylosis release in the beginning and do only, you know, uh, coronoid uh, coronoidectomy and uh, make the mouth opening educate can also be tried because that is a very limited surgery, yes. can be done intraorally. You I just think. feel that coronoid process, yes. do the coronoidectomy yes. and then yes. see if the uh, mouth opening improves uh, significantly. But having uh, said that, I would like to have serial, you know, CT scans of the, especially the coronal cuts, because my feeling is that in some of the cuts, you will find that there will be a bony block, you know, okay. somewhere, okay. because maybe they, these, okay. these two cuts are just anteriorly placed. Okay. As we go posteriorly, okay. there could be bony blocks there. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay, sir. Right? Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 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 Oh, that is, that so, is I put nice my... Presentation. Yeah, that was very nice. Uh, I must compliment the doctor who presented it. He presented it really very well. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.